What's up, creepers? I'm Kevin, and this is Haunted by Horror. With films like The Last House on the Left and The Hills Have Eyes, Wes Craven had already established his position in the horror genre. However, it was a nightmare on Elm Street that truly catapulted him to fame. The dark and twisted nightmare enthralled horror lovers, and even critics praised the unusual storytelling of the film. A Nightmare on Elm Street was the start of a hugely successful franchise, and it heralded the arrival of Freddy Krueger, the glove dream demon who will keep you up all night drinking coffee directly from the pot. And so with that, I present you with 10 facts about the Nightmare on Elm Street that you may not have known. Number 10, inspired by true events. Now, this might be difficult to digest for many, but the storyline of A Nightmare on Elm Street was actually inspired by a strange real-life incident. Wes Craven later revealed that when they were working on the story and the nature of Freddy Krueger, there were some disturbing reports in the LA Times that elaborated on a series of deaths that happened among male refugees from Cambodia and Vietnam who were suffering from a sleep disorder and plagued by nightmares. Many of these men died inexplicably in their sleep, prompting medical examiners at the time to dub it Asian Death Syndrome. It was later revealed to be related to a heart condition where the heart misfires during sleep, but the idea of something killing people in their dreams immediately struck a chord with Wes Craven, and this became the foundation of the Freddy Krueger story. Number 9. Welcome to My Nightmare. It must be creatively satisfying to use certain unpleasant things from one's past in order to craft something incredible. Wes Craven took up this challenge in A Nightmare on Elm Street, and some of the things that you see on screen are actually taken from Craven's worst childhood memories. Craven got Freddy's name from his childhood bully, Fred Krueger, who had picked on Craven for years when they were children, and his disheveled look, complete with dirty sweater full of holes and brown fedora, were inspired by a moment from his childhood in which a homeless man was walking down the street near Craven's house and stopped to look in the window at Craven, who then hid. When the young Craven looked out the window a few seconds later, the man was still there and made a scary face at him before walking away. Craven never forgot the image, or the way the man seemed so delighted by his fear. Number 8. Introducing Johnny Depp Johnny Depp might be a Hollywood legend today, but that journey began on Elm Street. However, the character he ended up playing was originally meant to be entirely different, and nothing like the young actor at all. Wes Craven had originally written the character as a big, blonde football player, and as we all know, Johnny Depp doesn't fit that description at all. But apparently, Wes Craven's daughter declared that he was dreamy. Reportedly, the young actor was so self-conscious and uncertain about his performance that he sometimes had to be reassured on set that he was doing a fine job. Number 7. The Boiler Room Wes Craven secured some of the best locations for the movie, and the idyllic suburbs of Los Angeles made the perfect backdrop for the nightmares to unfold and most of the filming locations used in the film still remain intact today. But, you may be surprised to learn that one of the most infamous scenes in the film, The Boiler Room, was also shot on location, in the former Lincoln Heights Jail, which still stands today, and has been used for numerous other film shoots as well. Number 6. The Makeup Was a Real Nightmare Embodying the persona of Freddy Krueger came at a price for Robert England. The makeup involved an extensive process that took almost four hours every day to be completed, and the actor would have to remain under all those layers of makeup for 12 to 15 hours a day, which took a toll on his skin. It also can't be ignored that the sets would be unbearably hot and teeming with people, and Robert England had to endure extreme heat under all that makeup. However, no one can doubt how effective the makeup effects were. One day, the cast and crew went for a meal at a restaurant across the street. Robert England was still in his makeup, and it shocked the waiter so much that he ran out of the eatery. Number 5. Freddy's Glove The gloved hand was actually inspired by Wes Craven's cat, and it was supposed to imply that Freddy could reach out to his victims from the dream world. They actually used three different versions of the bladed glove for the film. One of them had blades made of rubber, one had blades made of balsa wood, and the third, which was called the Hero Glove, 
had blades made of tomato knives, and this glove was actually sharp enough to cut through objects. Robert England himself ended up dealing with minor accidents because of the glove and cut himself on multiple occasions. The teeth on edge screeching sound that the glove makes was created by scraping a knife on the underside of a metal chair, and the sparks that the glove made were created by hooking the glove up directly to a car battery. Number four, the melting staircase. Heather Langenkamp has stated in the past that the staircase scene was achieved by using pancake mix, specifically Bisquick. Later, she added that mushroom soup was also used in the mixture. However, Wes Craven has stated that they used a mixture of oatmeal and glue, but whatever they used, it was a really gross and effective practical effect. Number three. One, two, Freddy's coming for you. If you ask any horror fan, they can probably recite Freddy Krueger's nursery rhyme set to the tune of One, Two, Buckle My Shoe. It's one of the most memorable songs in horror history, but the credit for it actually goes to Langenkamp's boyfriend at the time, Alan Pasqua, who was a musician. He created the little ditty, and the film's composer, Charles Bernstein, liked the result so much that he worked it into the film, and it became Freddy's reoccurring theme. Number two, the house that Freddy built. New Line Cinema is a big name in Hollywood. They started in 1967 and enjoyed some cult hits throughout the 1970s. They tried to balance art house cinema with enjoyable trash, and the formula seemed to be working until they got into producing their own movies in the 1980s. And by the time of Nightmare on Elm Street's production, the studio was in serious danger of going bankrupt. The studio was so broke that it almost folded in the middle of the shoot. Smart Egg Productions, which was supposed to front $1 million of the budget, backed out just before shooting was set to begin, sending producer Robert Shea scrambling to find funding from other sources. New Line was still in dire straits by the time production wrapped, but the success of Nightmare on Elm Street saved New Line from bankruptcy, and the studio was afterwards jokingly referred to as the house that Freddy built. Number one, theme park attraction. During Six Flags Fright Fest, Freddy Krueger not only made an appearance, he actually received his own haunted house in the park. And of course, Universal Studios' Halloween Horror Nights presents Freddy alongside Jason Voorhees, allowing fans to get up and close with the dream demon in the melted flesh. The legacy of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise is unquestionable, and Freddy Krueger has become as iconic as Dracula or the Wolfman. And at this point, Kruger seems destined to haunt the dreams of children for generations to come. All right, well, that about does it for this video. Did you already know all of these facts, or were there some that surprised you? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked the video, you can hit the little thumbs up button. You can subscribe if you want to see more horror-related content like this and turn on notifications to be updated whenever I upload a new video. Until next time, keep on creeping on.